Yo, 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 we live on location, Los Angeles, California. We came through a hurricane, Black, am I right? You know that, don't you? Hey, when we come through a hurricane, man, it got to be something special on the other end of that thing. Today, we got an NBA world champion world champ. in the building, Denver Nuggets own DeAndre Jordan. He a Clipper, though. He yes, a Clipper, sir. Though. He Clipper a Clipper, though. Let that be known. always claim that though. clip at heart, but he got to be a <laughs> yes, Nugget sir. for life, too. Now, yeah. he got that brain for him, <laughs> yeah. you feel me? Check it out, live on location. First of all, we appreciate you coming on, man. World champ, uh, you know. Champ. That's world so champ. Big big we appreciate champ. you coming you know on, saying? world Reach champ. Back. I got to say that, man. Baby. Reach Reach that, Thank y'all for having me, man. We watched your whole career, man, and, and man, love what you do, man. You always was highly talked about as a good teammate, man. And, Always been fan how you dunked that. <laughs> but, but appreciate cool. you coming on the show. But <laughs> thank you, man. Thank you. When you first got to the league and you first started getting playing time, who was the first person to bust your ass? Ooh. <laughs> All right. So yeah, um, coming into the league, extremely aggressive. I'm trying to find my way on the court. So I'm like, okay, if I block shots and rebound, like that's what the energy they go keep me out there. So. I mean, I don't know if I can swear on this show, but like, yeah, you swear all you want. Motherfucker, go like this. I'm jumping, you know, yeah. at, that, at 19. And everything. So, uh, <laughs> and everything. Chris, Chris Bosh, like, Ooh. you know, he had elbow pump fake. You know, he, he had hand. all of it. You know Lefty. what I mean? Ooh. He was in Toronto at the time, and uh, Mike Dunley be like, DJ, go out there, get him. I'm like, cool, bet, let's go. You know, I go out there. <laughs> he kid it on the elbow. He just look in the sky. I jump. By the time I get down, he already laid the ball in. You know, so. The second time, I'm like, all right, I gotta stay down. He pump fake again. I stay down. Pump fake again. I jump. Foul. <laughs> you know what I mean? So then I, I, Marcus Camby was like, man, you gotta work on your timing and study these guys' moves. But I was like, I was, man, I'm so excited to be out here. Like, I needed to be aggressive. So Chris Bosch definitely, you know, Dude, welcomed me to the league. That at, dirty yeah, left, man. Yeah, man. He was, yeah. So I used to see him and Zebo go at it like yeah. crazy. He's like, that Toronto Raptor, Chris Bosch. They forgot about him. Houston, Texas. Tell us about Houston, Houston. Who, who, who put the ball in your hand. So I grew up, uh, my mom, she had four boys. We all two years apart, I'm the oldest. So sports was kind of something that kept us out of trouble. You know what I mean? And uh, it was kind of hard not to play basketball. We, we did every, football, basketball, whatever, because we could do two on two. Yeah. So, you know, a lot of those things ended up in some fighting, some swinging, you know <laughs> what I mean? So um, I think basketball was something that I was really, really good at. Uh, and I love to play. Um, and I think from then it kind of took off. And I, once I learned how to work out and take it seriously and kind of like, all right, I'm going to work out before school and after school. Like, and I was like, okay, I'm kind of. You start working out yourself or somebody? Start I started working, working out, out with, with somebody. With you somebody. Know, Who was that person? One of my high school with? AAU coaches. The, my first team I played, like, uh, an organized, organized team yeah, with. Yeah. It was like eighth grade summer. Yeah. Cause I was just playing at the park, rec league, stuff like that. But like when, when I actually got on a team. How old were you when you first dunked? I was eighth grade, going to ninth grade that summer. How tall mm -hmm. were you? I was six two. Was you was okay, you was you, was you, crazy was you dunking man. the tennis ball, then the volleyball? Yeah, yeah, then yeah, the, yeah, for sure. Then the real ball. Yeah, and then you know you go up like this, kind of yeah, like that. Yeah, 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 you know yeah. what I'm saying? That's how I was dunking at the beginning. <laughs> yeah. And then I, like that summer, I started dunking the ball crazy. And I remember coming back ninth grade, I dunked the ball in the game. And I just blacked out. And then next thing I know, the other team on the free throw line, I'm like, what, what happened? They're like, oh, you, you, you was cussing. Man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, like, oh, you was cussing. all went crazy. I was like, yeah, motherfucker, like da, da, da. Yeah. Boop. And I'm, that next thing I look up, they shooting the free throw. I'm like, man, I don't remember none of that. What happened? You know what I'm saying? I yeah, just remember was like, moment. yeah, like they was in a press, you know, high school press. And I, I got the ball at half court. I'm like, oh, this is it. I'm like, yeah. this is the time. I'm, it's, it's going down, you know? <laughs> yeah. So uh, from that point on, it was just kind of like, yeah, I like to do that. If you were six two, then when did you hit your growth spurt? I had a growth spurt from my sophomore year. No, I'm sorry, from going to ninth grade to tenth grade. I was six two, and then I came back my sophomore year. I was six eight. So everybody looking at me, <laughs> everybody yeah. looking at Boy. me, kind of like, what's going on? And I'm, you know, you don't really feel yourself growing. But that summer, my knees was going crazy. I couldn't sit in the car for a long time. My mind was, was you driving. sleeping a lot. Yeah, I was sleeping a ton. But my knees, man, my knees was on fire. Like I yeah. sit in the car, she's red light. I gotta stick my knee out because I'm like, man, my knee just throbbing. Yeah. But um, yeah, I came back and my my teammates, my classmates was kind of like, man, what's up with you? And I'm like, what's up with y'all? Like I'm, but then I was like, oh shit, I kind of gotta like duck when I'm coming Talking into this to door. You know what I mean? Man. But. Um, yeah, that, that freshman to sophomore growth spurt was, was crazy. 
you in a good class. Like it's, uh, I think Blake in your class. Yep. Like it's a lot of guys in your class. When did you realize you was you was nice amongst them? When I started playing in AAU tournaments. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the first AAU tournament I played in where I got some notoriety was the Kingwood Classic in Houston. Um, and I had it, I caught a body out there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and uh, like that weekend, I got a ton of offers, you know what I mean? And then the next game, every college coach was in there. So I was like, oh, damn, I'm doing something, you know, I'm doing something good. And um, then like ABCD camp, those things roll yeah. around, you know Who what I mean? Who were some of the guys you used to see? That was, that was nice. That was ahead I mean, of you. My, you well, ahead of me, like, I was I was always looking at Greg Oden. Greg Oden, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm like, yeah, man, this dude monster. out here blocking everything, he, dunking he everything. Monster. So I'm like, damn, like, who? And at the at that time, I was 16. So I'm like, damn, like, who they play next? They play us? I'm like, I don't know if I want to. You know what I'm yeah, yeah, like, yeah, I don't yeah. know. If I'm, I'm like watching this dude. I'm this dude a grown man out here, and I still have some developing to do. Yeah. Um, but my class, man, it was like. Derrick Rose, Mike Beasley, OJ mm-hmm. Mayo, Kevin Love. Yeah, you know we had some we had some yeah, monsters in that I class. Know them you know what I mean? in your so class. <laughs> anytime any AAU tournament you went to, whether it was Vegas, it was you know Atlanta, wherever. Like you knew it wasn't gonna be no easy feat. You had to go against somebody who was ranked top ten yeah. each game. So, like that shit was cool to be able to play against guys. Where I'm like, okay, well, hey, if it's a big, I know I gotta go at him. If it's a guard, I gotta. Go yeah. up there and like defend the rim or yeah. whatever it is, but when you yeah, start, you was, when you was start seeing your name on like, like the rankings and and like you amongst the big men and all that stuff, how was that for you? Well, my year, I was the second ranked big man behind Kevin Love, so yeah. my mentality was anytime Kevin Love did something, I had to do something. You had to do something. You know what I mean? Like you know, he that's back when like. He was making the crazy passes, yeah, pass, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like he was, Lake he was Oswego. super he was skilled, loose, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm like, okay, if he do this or, you know, he hit a couple threes, I know I gotta go out here, I gotta dunk something crazy, I gotta block a couple shots, I gotta make everybody be like, okay, we looking at DJ, you know what I'm saying? But uh, that competition in high school really fueled a lot of us, I feel like, to be like, it was friendly, but it was like, okay, I'm watching them, I gotta, mm. you know what I mean? Like, And I feel like that's where that ego kind of come from, chasing that dream a little bit. You didn't make McDonald's. I did not. When you didn't make McDonald's, and I know you, everybody wanted to be McDonald's, mm-hmm. how did that motivate you? I was hot. <laughs> I, was I, was hot. hot. I was hot. Yeah. So was you, was you, because you, you know, one of the top players, yeah, and I was, I was like, how he didn't make did McDonald's? Did you know, like, before the announcement, like, or was you, did you find yeah, that they Yeah, they sent me a letter. They sent me a letter and was like, you know, uh, some bullshit, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, yeah. uh, you know, thanks for your participation, uh, participation and blah, blah, blah. But mm-hmm. like, you, you won't be selected. And I was like, damn. So I mean, when I was in high school, it was I was obviously in my senior year. I'm like, damn, like, all right, cool. I'm going to h- hold on to this. Yeah. And I had it in my car yeah. at the time. And I was like, all right, cool. I'm going to go work out. Cool. I read that shit, folded it up, went to the gym. So, but I ended up playing in the Jordan game and then um, yeah. uh, the Reebok, uh, like it was like, a, I forget the name of it, but it was in Chicago. That one was, yeah. that one was cool. And, um, but I was like, you know what? I ain't, I ain't really need that shit. But it was, it was motivation to kind of like keep working. Like, hey man, they don't think you're good enough, so you got to keep working. I know, we yeah. gonna take anything they yeah. give us though. We gonna <laughs> yeah, do yeah, yeah. We all gotta find yeah, a certain right. motivation. And I know you was one of the high ranked players that didn't didn't make the McDonald's game, but you was in every other game right. yeah. after that. Mm-hmm. How was it meet, meeting Mike? You know what? It was, um, it was something that you kind of, as a kid, you kind of like, damn, like, was he glowing? It's, yeah, I mean, you know what I mean? You know, you, you think about it, you're like, man, it's, man MJ Bulls, ah. Space Jam. You know, you're yeah. thinking about all that stuff when you meet this dude and you kind of just, like, I'm going to say this, I'm going to say this, you know. But then when you get up there, you kind of just like, <laughs> yeah. you, know, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know. I ain't seen people call him Mr. Jordan. Yeah. What's wrong with you, bro? <laughs> <laughs> they bring you up and say, Mr. Jordan, bro, Mr. Juicy, you out here. Yeah, man, so it's kind of like, like I'm going to tell him this, I'm going to tell him what I'm about to do. Yeah. You go up there, you just be like, Okay, and they be like, all right, next, boom. And you just kind of like, oh, shit, all right, I missed my opportunity. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of how that situation went, quick. Could it have been any other school that could have got you before Texas A&M? Uh, Somebody almost got you. Like, yeah, you like, like I, I damn near committed to UT, like, in the locker room at a, a elite camp. Mm. Mm. Yeah, like, you know, when you 16 years old, you go up in there, they got your locker and your name and your jersey shoes and all of that. And um, 
they got that stuff up, and I call my mom. I'm like, yo, I'm, I gotta go. I'm going here. I'm coming. She's like, whoa, 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 just. I'm like, no, nah, Rick Barnes. I'm about to tell him right home. now, you know. And she's like, let's just wait a week. I said, no, nah, you don't understand. They got my jersey already ready for me to pull up, you know. <laughs> yeah. so that's a ploy. She's like, she's like wait, you know. But uh, I had a I had a ton of friends like at UT. I had some people who I was close with at LSU. Uh, and then once Billy Gillespie left and went to Kentucky, I started to think about Kentucky. But you know, at that point in time, getting your release was very tough hey, from a school. It you know wasn't what I'm no saying? portal. Y'all <laughs> yeah, young nah. fellas is blessed and highly yeah, favored man, right what? now with that transfer <laughs> portal. Look, even though it be, you know, you know, they ain't down. I feel like they lack a little that bit of that toughness we was forced to have. We had yeah, to fight like, nah, through you gotta shit. Stay. Or, or if you want to transfer, you got to sit out a year. So I'm like, oh, hey. I ain't doing that. I'm yeah, just, you know. They just be like, oh, no, it ain't cool. We out. <laughs> yeah, like, so I feel like that kind of, I mean, it's cool if that's what you want to do. But, like, you can't escape every situation like that, especially when you get to the league. You know, it's kind of like, all right, well, shit, I ain't playing over here. Like, I, I'm gonna go to another team. Nah, it ain't, it ain't like that. Did so. you go to college like, man? All right, I'm trying to, I'm trying to go one and done. I'm trying to be in and out of here. Or did it just develop as the season went on? How did it play out for you? Well, yeah, I think when people tell you like, hey, this, you know, you could be out of here. We start looking at draft mock-ups My and draft. stuff. Because I mean, like we say, we don't look at that stuff. We look at that shit. No. You know what I'm one way or another, if your whether name it's your is brother, on the screen, you looking at it. You looking you know at it. Even, <laughs> if, even if you ain't, let's be frank. Yo, your teammate, yeah, your best your, friend, your like, family, you see somebody you gonna bring to you like, let you know something. You have a good game, a bad game that week, then you're like, oh shit, let me see if I dropped on here. Let me see, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> damn, I had a double-double, a couple blocks. I, maybe I moved up, you know what I'm saying? So I think I already had that in the back of my mind. Like, this is my goal. I want to reach this. I want to go to the league after this year. But when you plan, you kind of like, I don't want to look at it because I don't want to put that pressure on myself. Yeah. Um, but after the tournament, I was like, yeah, I can't come back to school again. Like, I got to get out of here. Like, <laughs> Cause I was, I mean, there was no disrespect to Texas a and I just was like ready to take another step. You know what I'm saying? And I was confident in myself to be able to do that. And you know, one of my really, really good friends who was Russ, they beat us in uh, Anaheim, UCLA, they had yeah. Ten pros on their team at the time. Right. They still they cheated us though for sure. He know that. He know that. <laughs> but uh, for but, the record, yeah, for the record, he know he know what was up. <laughs> they filed, they filed Donald Sloan on the shot. They know. But uh, but after that, I was like, okay, I'm gonna I'm go to the league. I took my chance, and then the, the, the Clippers took a chance on me. Was you, was you scared? Hell yeah, I was because that's elite. Yeah, that's I was elite scared. to to you know to, to decide just like yeah, I'm just gonna. And where yeah. and like where were you like when like, you where, where were you market, projected like, like where well, my you? my projection was late lottery late first so that's mm -hmm. what make it scary right there. So I'm like that's damn okay that's a, that's a big so, drop off that's a, that's yeah. a slippery slope yeah. like that's what make it scary yeah, like yeah. Yeah, before the drive it's like and you didn't play four years like I can see yeah. if you was a four year player was, and then he's like and I ain't got no choice you don't got no choice but right to to be projected to go second round that them ain't guaranteed nah hell no where were you. Where did you do your draft? Did they you told it? me to come to the draft. So you were there. I was in the green room. Mm. I didn't know you. Was yeah, in the I was there. So so tell me this experience. Yeah, yeah, that shit was insane. They told me to come to New York. I went there. Boom. And you know this time was like, hey, you know what? Best hey, shit ever. It's it's the great. And you know your teams like, hey, if you there at this pick, we taking you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, you know you know right. that whole thing. Get a lot yeah. of that shit. So I'm like, okay, cool, bet. Boom. I'm not gonna rat you teams out. Who whatever. So they like, okay, cool, we gonna take you. I'm like, all right, cool, bet. So I'm like, okay, well, you know why the camera not coming over here? Then they, they going to this guy. Like, what's going on with y'all? You know, oh, they, they, they just and told you me. Steady watching the camera, and I'm watching the camera, guys. watching the camera. So the first round goes. Mm -hmm. So I tell my mom, I'm like, yo, if I don't get picked at 30. I'm out. Mm -hmm. We leaving. So I still get Doc a hard time because he was in Boston. They drafted Jr. Giddens at the time. So I tell my mom, yo, what, you ain't drafting me. What's going on? You yeah, know. They <laughs> so did draft I give him a hard yeah. time about that, but. Uh, I remember Krista Chen, I'm, who I'm sure y'all know. Yeah, like, yeah. Right. Shout out she, Krista. Yeah, shout out Krista. Cause she, she, cause I was about to leave. I got yeah. up, I was, I'm out. If they, if I get drafted, somebody will call me. Yeah. yeah. So she's yeah, like, Sweet P, down. don't leave, don't leave. You gotta sweet stay. P, you already stay, know. Sweet P. She, she get that gets Man, you under what? control. And, I'm like, <laughs> and I, at this point, I'm, you know, I'm 19, I'm, a, I'm highly emotional. Yeah. I'm like, no, yeah. man, I can't sit up here and They're cry like in front of these people. Like I'm at you and everything. My friends, my my brothers with me, like they in high school and middle school. I'm like, man, I I gotta get out of here. You know. Yeah. She said, Sweet P, just stay, just stay. So then five picks later, at 35, the Clippers drafted me. And I was like, because I, I, I didn't have an individual workout for the Clippers. Yeah, neither did we. You know what I'm saying? So when they drafted me, I was kind of like, all right, cool, bet. Like, Clippers, you know. Yeah. L.A., I ain't never been to L.A. before. I yeah. went to uh, San Diego for the Pangos camp. That was the only yeah. time I had went to California. Mm. So 
I was like, all right, cool. They took a chance on me back. But I'm I'm excited, but I'm also pissed yeah, at the same damn, time. Right. Like, so it was kind of like a bitter. So I'm like, I'm happy I'm off the board, but I'm also pissed at the 34 teams that went before me. And also, a couple of them teams had multiple picks. Yeah, right. You know what I'm saying? Real, so like, I was like, damn. Like, you paid me not once, so, twice. Yeah. But like, you know, How many workouts you do? I did like maybe six workouts or so. Oh, and I was okay. just talking because I'm, I'm working out with a couple guys right now. And JaVel is in our little workout group. Yeah. So we was talking about this yesterday. Like We had a couple workouts together because we were in the same draft class. Okay. Mm-hmm. And they asked so me, you're I was going like, against JaVale yeah, in the workout. Yeah, it was like me, JaVale, Roy Hibbert, Jason Thompson, mm, guys oh, okay. like that going at yeah, it. Yeah. So uh, the Lopez twins, yeah. you know what I mean? So it was, you know, we had some some really good bombs. bigs that was yeah. playing yeah. good in college yeah. too, you know some what I mean? So it was, uh, it was it was funny, man. But, I, but I'm really fortunate that I ended up going to the Clippers, man, because like it was a chance for me to have some real OG vets. Yeah. And then it gave me a chance to also develop, and I wasn't like, put into a situation where I was like, all right, cool, we drafted you, let's go out, you gotta play, put up numbers right now. Yeah. When you talk about real OG vets, you know, I gotta give salute to my, to all our OG, mm-hmm. MC, Marcus Camby. Yeah. Talk about the impact that he had yeah. on you as a young player coming into the league and, and being able to, like you say, have somebody like him to learn from. Yeah, he's still one of my big brothers to this day. Like, Straight up. Our family's going on vacation together in the summertime. He. And I think that he he knows, but I don't think he really knows the impact that he had on my career. You know, he really taught me how to study the game. You know, and I looked at everything he did because mm-hmm. Gerg was when I went to Gerg's camp in the yeah, summer. Gerg. Gerg was like, "You getting Marcus Camby? You better watch everything he does. Tote his jock strap. Watch." You know, I'm like, you know, <laughs> yeah. what I'm saying, so I'm kind of like, all right, cool. So anything MC did, I was doing the exact same thing. Mm-hmm. But it was some things he was like, yo, you can't do that. You're a rook. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, exactly, so, right. yeah. so um, but like studying guys' moves, you know, what's his tendencies? What's his mm-hmm. guard's tendencies? What shots he like? Mm-hmm. You know, calling out plays was mm-hmm. something that he calling did. Out, I'm yeah. like, yeah. I'm sitting on the bench because I'm like, damn, like how he know this, what, what they about to run, mm-hmm. you know? And he would be like, yo, yo, a floppy action. They go do a pin down on this side for so-and-so. He I'm like, Whoa, that line back yeah. out like, there. Man, what the hell is he talking about? I have no, how do he, you know. Yeah. But I would watch him the entire time, and he was peeping like, oh, what the what the coach calling to the point at the free throw line. What, yeah. what he calling it. But he would memorize their top five plays, mm-hmm. a couple inbounds plays, and he would alert the team. Mm-hmm. So in shoot-arounds, he'd be like, yo, what um, what Chris came or what Chris Box like to do? Mm-hmm. Or what David Lee like to do? Yeah. And he'd be like, all right, what's this play? And sometimes I wouldn't know. Yeah. And he'd be like, what's this play? I'm like, oh, I know this one. Cool. Yeah. So he's like, you need to know every play that we go through and shoot around. Yeah. So after that, I just got hooked on it, man. Like, we would come in, you know, young boys doing the scout team and stuff. So I'm like, I, I got to memorize these plays. I know he go quiz me today. Yeah. Some days he wouldn't quiz me. Some days before the game, he'd be like, yo, what's this? I'm like, cool. You know, yeah. so I took pride in that as my career developed and as I developed as a player. And it just kind of became like, Second nature. Second nature, yeah, too. Yeah. So that helps you out throughout your career. Hell yeah. And Hell now yeah. do you do your young boys like that? I do, yeah. Like yes. that's why the, that's the importance of the OGs, the yeah. Canby, the UD, down, because man. they, when, when a dude come in, like what, look what you got a chance to turn yeah. into. All yeah. star, you know, all first team defense, mm-hmm. all them things. And some of that stuff got something to do with what you learned with. I mean, obviously you had to go do it and be talented on your own, but you, you had – a real OG. Yeah, man. I had a man, Baron Davis, Katino Mobley, Zach Randolph. I had like Zevo. Vets, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like dudes that would just be making you do stuff for no reason. Yeah. Just to <laughs> pay your dues. You know, like I still yeah, Marcus Camp made me go to Krispy Kreme. Baron Davis made me go to Starbucks and get a vanilla chai latte with soy milk. I still yeah. remember that. It was 16 yeah. years ago. That boy. First time I met you, know what you I'm saying? Like Zeebo that's crazy to in me. Memphis. Yeah. First time I met you was Zevo. Yeah, Zevo like, yo, ride with me. You know, I'm like, all right. Bet. Like, I ain't, you know, I yeah. can't say no, you know what I mean? So it was just, and I appreciate them dudes because they really like put some fear in me a little bit too, yeah. but also like was teaching me the do's and don'ts, and they was teaching me like lessons that they learned throughout their career. When the Clippers start depending on you, mm-hmm. they start believing in you of being that they go to center, how did that make you feel? As you seen, because you know, Zebo got traded. You mm-hmm. see these guys, now you see the business of it. You, yeah. you got all these veterans. And next thing you know, Zebo gone, mm-hmm. Catino gone. Yep, Chris you know, came and dipped. And I was like, oh, this, like, you know, it's my time. It's, yeah, know? like, like how was, how did that make you feel when when your opportunity presented itself? Well, I think 
early, my, like my rookie year, we only won 19 games. Yeah, we was, you know, that's how I know. I, I felt that before. With that type yeah, of we was 19, I felt that before. And I'm like, yeah, we won as many games as my age. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, so I'll never forget that shit. <laughs> <laughs> never lost in your life like never, that. Never, man. I'll never forget that. You know? yeah. We didn't quite we have know. that, but man, damn. I'm like, damn, like, yeah. damn. I'm like, all right, so next year we got to at least be in the uh -huh. mid 20s. Like, we got to, you know. And then the next year we ended up getting Blake, obviously, and we just both started to improve. And then we got CP, and we just added pieces. But, um, I think with that situation, I kind of was like, I played some of my rookie. I played maybe like 20-some games. Started a couple games because guys was in and out the rotation mm -hmm. and hurt. And I was like, damn, like, I'm doing this with these minutes. Like, I, now I want more of this. Yeah. You know, so yeah, I was kind of continued to work. And I'm like, damn, like, because at first they was like, I was like, oh, yo, MC, I got you. Like, sub? I was like, right. nah, nah. And practice, like, nah, you ain't coming in. I'm like, yeah. whoa. I was like, you know, so I'm the coach oh, no. was like, get in there. I'm like, y'all, I tried to get them. He said no. The OGs you know? in practice. They're not coming out. They not coming no. out because this is their game time. They're not coming Very out. Very strong no. used to do us like that when we this first got to the Everybody. Now. I'm like, yo, Paul <laughs> Davis, let me, y'all, oh, fuck out of here. And yeah. like, damn, all right. Like, so coach is like, DJ, get in there. I'm like, I don't want to tell on these dudes. I'm like, coach, he said no. You know what I'm saying? What you want me to do? Like, I can't Straight pull up. them off the court. We all saw the press conference or the aftermath for when y'all found out that Chris Paul was getting traded and y'all, you know, Lob City and you and Blake going crazy. Talk about how that was when, when CP first arrived and how that changed, like, kind of like everything for the changed Clippers the moving yeah, forward, yeah, right? The, like the whole belief system and everything, the way that y'all were viewed. Talk about that. Because you mean, had been was, there, like we, you say, when you were 19. Yeah, we was viewed like shitty, obviously. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's, like LA is, is a great city. It's also a Laker city, you know? And yeah, we, right. we knew that, we know that. Even when yeah, we was good, we still knew that. Straight mm -hmm. up. Um, and that's no disrespect to them, but we were still trying to come out and beat their ass every time. Every you time. You know what I'm saying? But I think um, me and Blake were very hungry before CP got there mm -hmm. and we was learning, but we was also like trying to put on a show at the same time. But I think once Chris got there, it kind of changed our mentality. Like, nah, we not working hard enough. Yeah. We got to do more. Cause like he expected this from us and like, we can't just keep yeah. ma not making the playoffs. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And he really, I think put a lot of, I wouldn't say pressure, but like he expected more of us. Yeah. To like be some better students of the game and to our approach to be a little bit better. And like, you know, people have different views of CP. Like, they'd be like, man, he be on you. Like, yeah. but like, he like really helped us excel quickly. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Cause he was so smart. He, he expected a lot out of you too. So it's kind of like when he got there, everything just the changed. The expectations yeah. just went, went high. Yeah. So we, it was, it was, we knew we had to do better. You no, know, us as big man, you know these little guys over here. But us as big man, he really a small we, we, forward, we, B. We 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 I we love our point guard. How did CP being part of the team help your game? Man, CP knew how to play. Like he was so cerebral, man. Like he, we were so young at that point. He was like, when I come on the screen, I don't even I don't even care why I'm throwing it. I'm just y'all go get it. Yeah, you know I'm like. Bet. So when he first came to the team, he was throwing lives at me, and Black was kind of like, "Damn, like you putting it right at the rim, like oh, you want he want something to do with yeah, it." Yeah. <laughs> so so he was. What y'all mean? Like yo, like you could throw it a little, you know. We ain't, he we was ain't. too on point with it. Yeah, he was super on point. <laughs> but it was like you know that's what great point guards do. They he like I see what I need to. So you just put. And we was like, nah, we we want to catch it here. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So he was kind of like, oh okay. So he now then he would just come up because first he was like you know CP, but then he start coming off and just. <laughs> throwing it anywhere, he's like, I know one of y'all gonna go get it. Yeah. So like that kind of like <laughs> like yeah. jump started everything, you know what I mean? And then Blake was such a great passer too. Like him and CP had a great two man game. He would dump it off to Blake in the pocket, and if Blake went dunking on you, he was floating it. He was throwing me a lob. So we had a a real Connect. tight connection, man. And we was all working on that stuff. And then once we added like JJ, Jamal, Matt, guys like that, that shit just kind of took off. When you first heard Live City, how did you feel about the name? I, I mean, I knew that's what it was gonna be, but like, <laughs> you know, but I'm like, man, like, cause you see Chris with Tyson Chandler with guys like that, yeah. you know, Hilton Armstrong at the time, I believe. I'm like, man, these dudes is catching line. I'm like, man, we a couple years younger than you, these dudes, and we, you know what I mean? This is what we, we want. Really get it. You know what I mean? Cause yeah. Ben was throwing them same passes, but I'm like, now we got somebody doing that at a, at the same level, if not higher. So it was something that we was looking forward to. You know, young boys, you want to dunk everything anyway. So yeah. with him being there, we like, man, we got CP. 
oh, it's about to be over. But um, that shit was, it, it definitely changed like our dynamic and our mental focus as a group though. Talk about how, how it's changed. Like you guys lose to the Spurs in the second round. We got swept too. <clears throat> <laughs> it was ugly. Yeah, I'm, I'm aware. Swear. I was one of the Clipper fans out there talking <laughs> yeah, you know, my ears, hoping y'all was going to pull it off, but it didn't Man. happen. So I'll get swept, and then y'all get Doc Rivers. Talk about how Doc, because I can remember from just from a fan and a former player standpoint how that was the first time. I hadn't even been to a game yet, but when he came and he started to cover up the jersey, and just talk about how Doc came in and he changed. Like He made like that, that next step after CP came mm-hmm. and he established some – when Doc came, it took it to a whole nother level. Yeah. Talk about how Doc, he changed man, things. Man, I love Doc. Doc came in with a swagger that just was like, nah, fuck that. This is about us. You know, I know we share the same arena, and that's no disrespect to them, no disrespect to their fans, but, like, this this our, this our 41 games in here. You know what I'm saying? And I think that that was huge. Like, it pissed a lot of people off, but at the same time, we ain't, you know, he ain't care, we ain't care. Yeah. And, uh, it was, uh, and Doc really, I think, uh, I give him a lot of credit to this day because I think that he was one of the first guys who, coaching wise, really was like, "I'm go. I'm gonna let you play through your mistakes. Don't look over here when you mess up. I'm not taking you out. Just play." Yeah. And he gave me the like, okay, because like obviously it's Chris and Blake. They're the all stars of the team, and mm-hmm. we, I knew that. I knew like my job was this. Mm-hmm. But he was the first guy who was like, "Oh no, no, we ain't got a big two. We got a big three. And I'm like, "Big three? Yeah. Where? Like who? Oh me? Oh mm-hmm. shit. Okay, bet. You know." And he was like, no, this is this is what we're doing. This is our three guys. Because at that point in time, every team wanted a big three. You mm-hmm. know? And he was the first guy to kind of promote that with all three of us and just give me the confidence to go out there and excel. And I think that that um, helped me individually as a player, as a man, but also like our group to kind of like, oh, no, we should be expecting this out of ourselves and mm-hmm. not just a first-round exit or just making the playoffs. We want to win a championship. And that was his and our aspiration when he came. How was it for like not only your team but the league to start appreciating what you brought to the table? Man, I, it was it was huge, man. Cause like the league is obviously a scoring league, you know what I mean. But I, there are some guys like Marcus Canby, Ben Wallace, guys yeah. like that who put their name Have on a defense. Impact, yeah. And you know, Doc always talked about being a star in your role. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like DJ can't. Everybody can't score thirty. Everybody can't take thirty shots, but you can go out there and get 20 rebounds. You can go out there and get four blocks. You can go out there and have an, a, a huge impact on the game without just scoring. Yeah. And I was like, okay, cool. Like, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, whatever this role is, I'm going to try to make sure that nobody else is better than me at this. Exactly. And at that point, it was rim running, setting picks, rolling to the basket, and being a great defender and rebounder. And when I started to see, like, the benefits come from that, I was like, okay, shit, I don't, you know, I don't – Need to be pissed if they ain't throwing me the ball in the post. Like I can get it some, you know, another way. And um, like it, it, it took off after that. My confidence was was high, and and I started to realize like, hey, you know what? If you set a screen and roll hard to the basket, like you probably gonna get the ball. Anyway, hey, you know. Tell me this. So y'all win a, you know, for the Clippers, which is huge. Y'all get a fifty-seven wins franchise record. You know what I'm saying? Then a Donald Sterling tape <laughs> drop. <laughs> like. <laughs> Like, oh what God. the fuck? Like, tell me where you were, like, and just, like, how it came to you. And then when you got with the team, like, tell me how all that played out for you. Man, I think it was game – it was in the playoffs for sure. Um, it, but we was on the road. And we had a meeting before, and Doc was like, hey, tomorrow some stuff go come out about Sterling. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and, um, you know, but it's some bullshit, you know. Don't even don't even worry about that. We focus on beating the Warriors, right? You know, so we and we laughing about it because we like at this point we don't know What's the severity the of the yeah. situation, you know. And I'm like, man, this dude probably got caught with some girl or something, right? You, you know, just, like yeah. we just like, we all thinking about what you think is gonna happen, you know? Right. So then that the next morning. I, you know, the group chat is going crazy. So I'm like, man, what's, what's this? I'm scrolling back up. I'm like, oh, it's the audio. Boom, I'm listening to it. I'm like, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, this is not what I thought it was. You know what I'm saying? And like, the shit that he was saying, obviously, you know, everybody in the world has heard it at this point, but it was kind of like, damn, like that's, this is you wild. know who you got on your team? You know, right. you, know the, you know, like at that point, I think it was only like J.J. Reddick, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It was the only white dude on the team. That's my guy, so I love him. Yeah, shout out but, J.J. Yeah, shout out J.J., but like, when we went to the shoot-around meeting the next morning, the energy was just fucked in there. 
you know. And at that, you know, at that, I'm I'm the type of player. My my, you could see it on me right. the whole time. So Doc, like DJ, what's going on? Yeah. I'm like, man, I don't know if I want to play, man. Like, fuck yeah. this dude. I don't know. I'm I ain't I'm, I'm cool on this. Yeah. So JJ is like, whatever you guys want to do, like, right. I'm with you guys. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. like, I'm whatever y'all want to do. And you know, Doc really, he, you know. He gave us one of his speeches, like, and he was like, "Man, when y'all made it to the NBA, when y'all was dreaming, y'all wanted to win the championship. Y'all want to win it for an owner. Y'all wanted to win it for your teammates." And, and we was like, "Our teammates." Here. He's like, "Well, so fuck this guy. We go win for ourselves." And we was like, "All right, cool, bet." Yeah. So before the game, I'm like, "Man, we either go beat the shit out of the Warriors, or they go beat the shit out of us. <laughs> it ain't gonna be a close game." Yeah. And they beat the shit out of us that night. Yeah. And it was, you know, that's how I went. And then we ended up winning in seven. And then, you know. Uh, Everything after that happened, and we got Steve Ballmer. He's a he's a great guy, and he really cares about the team. But that situation was just top to bottom was crazy, bro. Making all defensive team and all NBA. When you seen that cross the board, like, hmm. like, how did you feel about that? I felt like the stuff that I had been doing had finally been, you know, appreciated. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cause I was like, I expected to make first team all defense. Yeah. Cause I'm like, I know I'm doing my stuff out here. You know, I'm yeah. I'm playing well. I'm you know. But um, when I got, cause I, I remember I was working out back to back days in the summer, and they called me and they was like, Hey, you made first team all defense. I'm like, Oh shit, hell yeah, cool. Bet. Talk to my brother. Talk to my mom. Yeah. The next day I'm in the gym again. The guy called me. He said, Hey, you made first team all NBA too. I'm like, mm-hmm. What? Mm-hmm. Like. Like first team All NBA, he was like, "Yeah, yeah, you." I'm like, "Oh shit!" And that's when I was like, "Okay, like now, like this shit is real." You know what I'm saying? Like, especially with the bigs that we had at the league, in the league playing at such a high level at that time, like Marcus All, Demarcus Cousins, um, Anthony Davis, like we yeah. guys like who was balling. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it was something that I really appreciated, and um, I, I didn't take that for granted at all. And I was like, "Okay, I got to continue to." to be dominant on both ends of the floor. Everybody feel like the Clippers had a championship squad. Yeah. Them years. Like, all y'all was all-stars. Like, y'all making all these teams. What what makes you what, – what do you feel that y'all didn't get over the hump? Man, I could I could name a couple different things. But I think, for one, it was – and this is no excuse, but I think um, we caught the injury bug a ton. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And that shit – yeah. It sucks. You can't do nothing about it because it's out of your control. Yeah. You know, like s- small things though. You know, like Blake knee, CP wrist. You know, it was yeah. just like just stupid shit. You know, mm-hmm. and um, so that those are the ones that kind of hurt yeah. a little bit. But I also think when you're younger as a player, um, ego definitely is a big factor. Yeah. You know, and when you get older, you don't think about that shit. You just like, man, I just want to win a chip. You know what right. I'm saying? Regardless if I play a ton, if I shoot a ton, if I score, it don't matter. Like, cause it, this is a bigger goal. But yeah. I think, um, and I'm I'm sure I'm guilty of this uh, at times. Like, one more during the the postseason. But like, as long as our score is higher than theirs, that shit really don't matter. Straight yeah. up. You so know I think about that, that. Um, you know some of us were definitely affected with that. But when you get older, you can't get that you can't get that shit back. So mm-hmm. yeah. Let me ask you this. That live dunk that you got on, <laughs> why do they send that shit like, to you wait, every time day? Out, time like, out. like you're not going to do that. You, I'm glad you stopped at the dang. We ain't got to do that. Everybody know who you're talking about. You ain't got to say his name. Okay. All right. Do they send that shit to you every day? Uh, I Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know they just send it to you every day. Like, man, yeah. look at this. Yeah, like, yeah. like you, you see that. You, you see are. that line. Nothing to do with this. I had no idea. I just throwing you under the bus. I don't like know the this. question. You out living your life show. peacefully, chilling, <laughs> or doing whatever you doing. You like, got nothing to do with this. This is that's not, like this NBA is history. They showing that shit on commercials, all sorts of shit. That shit was crazy. And I think at the time, like. Time out. You ain't completely f- guilt free because you made a little face. You knew what you did when you <laughs> done was, what you the, done. No, that was that you was that was, was y'all. That was, y'all face listen, and- that was y'all boy Lo who made the, Lo made the face at me first, <laughs> and I was I just was like, yeah, you're right. Like that shit was crazy. You know what I mean? Like and originally, like I tell this story all the time. Like 
I dunked the ball, I heard a boom, and I'm like, damn. So I'm I'm looking down about to check on him, and then CP pushed me, and I just black out after that. Like, yeah. I'm, then you walk off. Like, yeah, so, like, so time out. What are you, like, that's cool, but what are you, because like, you in a different generation from when he was booming on motherfuckers. Yeah. Brother. Like, we went home, and we talked about it or whatever. Like, you got immediately to the locker room and your whole was blowing social up. media, like what was that like to yeah. see the, the creations that was being created, the things, they were like, Man. it was getting real creative. It was crazy, like, you know, they throwing <laughs> coffins on the shit, right. you know what I'm saying? So it's kind of like, damn, like, you like, damn, that was a crazy they play, but you also videos like, damn, and everything. You know? Was that like the most you probably been like, uh, oh, trending yeah. ever on yeah, your whole yeah, career? Yeah, yeah, like that's still not stopping to this day. Nah, nah, some dude got a, the tattoo of my face, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was weird. Like, I we did a meet and greet sign thing. He was like, "Yo, I got the tattoo," and I'm like, "What?" So I mean, I'm like, "Yo, that's that's why I wouldn't have done that." But like, but it was funny because at that time, like, I was very uh, nervous to go to the free throw line. You know what I'm saying? And I made the free throw. So my yeah. brother texted me after the game. He was like, "Man, I'm just happy you made the fucking free throw." <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was funny, man. It was T good. T take me, take me back to the to the 2015 offseason, man. You didn't, you didn't, you didn't, you didn't verbally agree to Cube. You didn't told Cube, "I'm coming." Yeah. Four years, eighty, which is a that's a dump truck, Bag. by the way. You know, Bag. congratulations on that sidebar. That. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but like. When, where, how did the the did your your Clippers teammates ascend down? Nah, you ain't your doing Houston, that. Your H town home, find out where you living, where you at, and pull up. Like, yeah. how, what what was you doing? Did you know they was coming? Did they just like catch you off guard? Like, they just how did all this happen? Nah, and then nah. held you captive. Had to, did they yeah, really had to do it? They held me hostage in my own crib. So that's, please, uh, nah, that's what that's what I'm like. Just I play, play it back. Tell house. me from your perspective how this went down. Yeah, so you know we we beat. Golden State that year, or no, we beat San Antonio that year. Right. We go up 3-1 on the Rockets. They come back and beat us. So I'm like, damn, man, maybe we ain't got enough. We ain't, you know, we we not been through this shit before. Like, I want to try, maybe I want to try something new, you know. So I commit to Dallas, you know, and at this point you got like a week or so yeah, before the, you yeah, can sign, yeah. you know. Yeah. So I'm like, damn, man, I ain't even called Doc. That's my guy. I need to tell him. So I'm at home in Houston, my phone ring, it's Doc. And I'm like, oh shit. I'm gonna tell my brothers, I'm like, yo, look, look, look. My brother's like, don't answer that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, nah, I gotta answer, I gotta talk to my guy, man. So I answer, I'm like, yo, what up, Doc? He's like, yo, man, you know, took me a couple days to process, but you know, I just wanted to congratulate you and, you know, honestly just tell you that, you know, I think we still got some unfinished business. And I'm like, yeah, I feel you, man, like, but I just think I need a new challenge, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, he was like, yeah, man, but you know, I think we still could get it done here. And I'm like, I feel you, I just, I didn't already tell these people I'm coming, I can't tell them I'm not going. And he goes, well, if you did, we had your back. And I'm like, I don't know, man, I didn't already tell these people <laughs> I'm coming, you know? And he was like, well, just give me an hour and I'll call you back. I'm like, all right, cool. The whole, the whole conversation went so fast, you know what I'm yeah. saying? And I'm like, okay. All right, that went well. <laughs> so Blake called me, like 30 minutes later, he's like, yo, what's going on? I'm like, I don't know, what you mean, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> he said, you well, know. he said, well, I just got off the phone with Doc. We coming to Houston. And I said, whoa, 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 what, what, why? And he was like, well, I don't know. He said, you, you may be coming back. And I'm like, oh, she said, but I'm going to come tonight, though. So I called my mom. I'm like, hey, like, uh, I think Doc and them coming out here. She said, for what? And I was Doc like, and them. Doc and them. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> Doc and them coming out here. And she was like, what you mean? And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> And she said, what, they trying to get you to come back? And I was like, well, I ain't left yet. And she goes, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> and that one said, he ain't left yet. It's all over. She already knew. That's why she said, oh, yeah. shit. Yeah, she said, oh, shit. She said, them people, them people in Dallas, they'll kill you. And I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> So be over here tomorrow so we can meet with him. Look, so, look, look, yeah. I need you, mama. Mama, I need yeah. you. Like, yes, you just said it, so be yeah, here. that was, she was crazy, man. So they came and we... We talked about a ton of stuff, man. And Paul Pierce came, and I had never even met him before. Like he was, you know, he had just signed with us. He's like, yo, right. DJ, you need to come back, man. Did we come need with you. The, and I'm like, did he, did he come with the? Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> he like, oh, like I love you, but I'm like, I don't even know you. Really like that. You know, but like he, it who was, was cool. the group? Who was the whole it group? It was um, Steve Ballmer, Doc, Ooh, um, came with Blake, the big gun. Um, Chris, 
the equipment manager who I was super close with, they had him, you know Matias. Yeah. They yeah. had him come out, you know, so that was funny but weird, you know. <laughs> and then, uh, cause they were like, man, we need anybody who know DJ right, to yeah, get it, you know. Try to get it done. And they bought the contract dude. So when he came, he just set up in the dining room, set up and started typing up shit. I'm like, okay, like, damn. So we talked, whatever. I'm So ultimately it's like, okay, cool, I'm staying. Oh, and JJ was there. So then I'm like, all right, cool. Like I'm dabbing everybody up, man. All right, cool. I'll see y'all in a couple of days. I'm gonna go on vacation with my family. I'll see y'all, man. And Paul Pierce and Armand Hill go outside. They smoking cigars. I'm like, yo, what y'all? What? You know, I think y'all about to leave, you know. And Paul like, oh, no, no, no. Doc not leaving until you sign. <laughs> <laughs> Like, this ain't just as long yeah, we, we like, here. Nah, yeah, like, nah, I said, no, nah, don't worry, bro. Like, you know, it's going to be midnight, 11, 12, uh, New York time. I'm going to sign at 11 in Houston. They're like, nah, we nah. don't until you sign. <laughs> they ain't playing with you. So I'm, like, <laughs> I'm like, all right. So we ordered a whole bunch of grub. We ordered a whole bunch of food. And uh, like at 11.01, I signed. Then they left. Was you getting these calls <laughs> from Dallas in between oh, yeah. that time? Like, yeah, what yeah. was that like? That was... Uh, that made me feel like an asshole for sure. <laughs> yeah. Because you know, now you didn't meet, yeah. you didn't rehash with the guys and everything is dry. But and you're I'm like, like oh, damn, I'm cool. I did you know, still I'm like, Yeah, I'm like, damn, like, you know, I'm like, damn, I didn't tell Chandler and Dirk and these dudes I'm coming. And they they calling me, you know. And I'm like, oh, no, I'm cool. Like, Real you know, grand theft. Yeah, because I'm like, it was nothing against them, but I'm like, I knew I wouldn't leave him. Yeah, you, you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, I didn't want to get on the phone with them and like. Bullshit them. Yeah, you know, so I was like, man, I'm going to just. And then, like, you know, we, obviously the NBA, we played Dallas first game of the season next year. You know what I'm saying? So that was a real emotional game you for everybody. You just clip at heart, yeah, man. So like, Ain't man, nothing wrong know. with it. So it, it is what it is. It was fun. You get your first All-Star appearance. How was that for you when you heard that? That shit was crazy. It was, it was just like being first team all NBA. Um, and, you know, it still was weird, like, being first team All NBA the year before and then not making the All Star team, right? That was weird. That's to crazy. Me. Yeah, that was yeah. But uh, the next year I was like, okay, I gotta make it. You were for sure now. Yeah, like I'm like <laughs> I gotta make it now, you know. So uh, like I got I got the call from our media people and they told me and I was I immediately got on the phone called my mom my brothers and they was like, oh shit we in New Orleans let's go you know, but that I think was. Like, damn, man, I'm really doing this shit with my career. Like, I'm really, I saw the steps, you know. Mm -hmm. And at first I'm like, man, I don't, I don't know if I can excel, like, and do the things that I did throughout my career by just playing defense and rebounding, Doc. I don't know if I can get there with, with that. And that was like a selfish younger player talking. But once I bought into that shit, it, you know, I started to see everything kind of benefit. I know they always bring up Live City. Do you, like, are you really kind of really feeling the impact that y'all had on LA and the Clippers, because you know, when we was here, it's such a dominant Laker town yeah. for for you to get any looks this way. Yeah, yeah, it's a it's it's a good thing. Yeah, it's uh, I definitely think we changed culture with the Clippers, just like y'all did. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I think. I mean, there was times where me and Blake was running down the court doing that <laughs> shit. You know what up. I'm saying? So it was kind of like. Man, especially when L.O. got there, you know, yeah. we was like, we was, he was like, y'all, y'all, y'all don't know shit about that. We was, like, <laughs> we was like, yeah, we do, yeah, we do, you know what I'm saying? But it was, it was cool to be able to have those experiences, and I, we would always talk about like, if Laker fans telling us, "Fuck y'all, y'all ain't shit," we doing something good, you know what I mean? Like right. so, because before y'all been saying say that to us, they didn't care to say nothing to exactly. you. Exactly. So I yeah. think that we definitely helped change the Clipper culture, like you know, doing the things that we did. Um, but like, not winning a championship, I thought would like haunt me forever mm -hmm. with the Clippers. But honestly, it hasn't because I know like the shit that what we did was was great there. All that happened with Dallas, and <laughs> and I still went back there. <laughs> <laughs> How did that happen? <laughs> and I still went there. You know what's crazy? Like my uh, the Clippers obviously started to like break up. And yeah. Uh, at that point, I didn't have an agent. I didn't have an agent for like maybe five years or so. Yeah. Um, so I, I needed an advisement because I'm like, okay, well, I can't negotiate a trade for myself, you know. So they was kind of like, hey, like we we doing this with the team, so you know, you need some representation. So I ended up hiring Jeff Schwartz, and um, after you know the Clippers was done, he was like, hey, uh, 
Dallas is interested. And I'm like, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> you know, he's like, no, I'm serious. And I'm like, come on, Jeff, stop playing. What teams we got? Yeah. He's, no, nah, I'm telling you, Dallas, and they have, they have no hard feelings about the situation. I'm like, nah, I don't believe that. Like, yeah. Dirk's still there, Cuban's still there. Like, them dudes definitely hate me. Like, it's <laughs> yeah. not going down. You know? yeah. He's like, nah, I'll get, I'll get, you know. So we talked, whatever, and they was both like, no, nah, it's not, we, you know, we're past that, blah, blah, blah. So I was like, all right, well, shit. You know, it was the it was a great option at the time. You know, they had a really good young core, and yeah. you know, they were they drafted drafted Luca, mm-hmm. um, had Harrison Barnes, Dirk, Wesley yeah. Matthews, Dennis Smith Jr. Yeah. They had guys, you know. So I was like, all right, cool, I'll go, cool, yeah. whatever. And uh, they ended up trading my ass, like in <laughs> January. <laughs> but I had a, I had a good time down there. Like they welcomed me with open arms, and I'm a Cowboys fan, so I was like. Yeah. I was at the games. Shame you on you. No, 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 no. Like, shame on. I have to hey. put you in the same hey, bag. We're going to delete that out. Don't worry about what the that Cowboys needs to make though. We're going to beat that. Beat that fake ass America's team needs to be like. People hate, be hating on our rings. I don't understand. What? Rings like, we gonna, win. What you, a, you a Bears fan? Fucking right. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Don't be disrespectful. Now that team, come on now. At least our fans have sense. We sensible. Y'all think y'all about to win this shit every year. (laughs) We We don't win it this year. We got a bill. We let our team build. You motherfuckers running around every year. That's why I love. That's the one thing. Listen, that's the one thing Stephen A. don't miss on. Stephen A. don't miss when he gets to talk about them damn Cowboys. We confident in our team, man. Get on my nerve about just as much. You, Kmart, J. O. D. Right, all of you. (laughs) Ain't none of them from Dallas. They Dallas Cowboys. Man. Are, you got a whole Houston, Texas team. The Texas boy. ain't come till I was like a sophomore in so high school. What? I couldn't be a Tennessee Titans fan. Listen, that man. was not happening. I, I see. Damn what was your shit. first impression of Luca? I thought Luca was super skilled, bro. Like he saw the court and he was just he didn't like his game. Like he didn't let the NBA speed him up. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like he was a big body, so he you know he knew how to footwork. <laughs> he he's not the fastest guy. He's not the most athletic, but he yeah. know and he's almost like. Uh, a guard Zebo. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like Zebo, <laughs> right. you know what I'm saying? Like right. Zebo wasn't like the quickest. He didn't jump the highs. He had a quick second jump and he knew angles. Yeah. So I feel like that's kind of what Luca has excelled on, man. Yeah. How did you feel when you got a chance to go sign with, with Brooklyn and you like, like, did you think, like, okay, this yeah, this, I was this like, I'm about to win a ring. Like, KD, yeah. Kyrie, like, this, this is my moment. This is my yeah. chance to really get one. Like, how, yeah. how did that feel going to join that team and, 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 like, what you thought they were building up over there? Yeah, I mean, like, obviously, like, the plan was to, you know, yeah. go play with your boys and win a ring and do it the way you wanted to do it. And, and it was fun. Like, the, the, the years there were super fun. But, like, you know, injuries, coaching All changes, things craziness. like that. You know, like, shit thrown at you that you couldn't just get over. And, um, but like, I don't regret that situation because I was able to like go play with guys that I consider friends and like, Mm -hmm. you know, build with them and do something that like we chose to do. Fans don't always understand that. Like, I talk about my time in New York a lot. We didn't win really nothing, but like, you know what I'm saying? And in LA, you know what I'm saying? We didn't really, when you look, we didn't make the playoffs, but like, those two cities, I played the longest of my career in four years each, and I got more relationships and friends and bonds and different things. They don't understand, like, well, how could you say that was some of your best bonds, times? Man. It's like, bro, yeah. them was some of the, like, especially in L.A., because that's the first. Yeah. You never get a first back. Like, I experienced all type of stuff with him, Corey, Keon, yep. Elo. Even though shit didn't go right to y'all and everybody else, like, bro, this was, was a once-in-a-lifetime yeah. situation yeah. that I would have never got to do with, like you say, with some partners. Yeah, like, I, like, I, like in my heart, I'll always be a Clipper, you know what I'm saying? Like, I was there the first 10 years of my career. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I built relationships with teammates with coaches with you know that's crazy. people in the arena you know what i'm mm. saying like you know so when i even go back there i still see people that i'm close with so that shit was like i and i think like at this point you know after winning the championship i'll forever be a nugget too but like um like that shit you don't you don't forget like yeah. the first couple years you didn't make the playoffs whatever like those experiences yeah. those stories that's, that shit mm-hmm. is forever you was in the gym with KD and Kyrie coming out of practice. Did you ever come in practice and just look around like, man, look at these two motherfuckers right here? Like, <laughs> yeah. what was that like to see them? Like, I'm really on the team with these two dudes yeah. and these two motherfuckers is crazy. Yeah, I just, just being like, when that big three shit was forming, like even with the Clippers, like just to see Blake and Chris work on their craft and work on their game, the way JJ would work, it was just like, it's crazy. But then when I got to Brooklyn, seeing them dudes who Put, can put up 50 every night if they want to. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, um, 
the way the stuff that they did with the basketball, like how they worked, like everything during practice was full speed working the individual. So then when they got in the game, it was just, you know, KD already seven feet tall, you know, so no, that's when right. he shoot the ball, it's like, you know, you know, you know see you. Kyrie doing crazy layups. So then when they get in the game, like, oh, I ain't got to put it that high off the glass. I can put it here, level three. You still not getting it. Yeah. So just to see like them dudes like perfect their craft over and over and over again. And then when James got there, I'm like, there's no way. If I'm with the Clippers, I'm like, there's no way in my career would I play with Kyrie, KD, James. and James on yeah. the same team. It just didn't make sense. Yeah. Um, but to, for I, for that to actually happen, it's just like wow. Like three MVP caliber players on one team. It just crazy. Didn't, it was it was crazy. Like so, just to be able to see, you know, them play ones or yeah. shooting competitions. Like you was there all day. Yeah. Because you know, they weren't missing. So <laughs> that was that was cool to see. How does it feel to be called? World champion DeAndre, champ man, Jordan. champ. Like, like, just a, it's the cherry on for top. For the rest man. of your life, man. they gotta it's, call they you champ. Sh- exactly. So, like, how how did that feel? It um, that shit still. It, sometimes it don't feel real. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, I'll go back and like watch the videos and look at the pictures. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Because it's like that feeling is, it's crazy, bro. Yeah. Like all type of emotions came up for me at that time. Like. I, and then you know I got in, I got in game five, and like I, you know, I made a couple impacts on the game, yeah. and like it was, it was cool to be able to have that experience, and like, especially with guys like Jeff Green and yeah. Ish Smith and yeah. Ish my you know what I'm saying? Like, so it's, it's guys God that like have been around in. the league yeah. and put their work in, and like guys who like you know bounced around the league mm-hmm. for a little bit, you know, like Aaron Gordon and KCP, yeah. and guys mm-hmm. who really had to like Jamal and Michael had to work through injuries and shit. So we had a team of fighters. I feel like so yeah. like. And I'm I'm thinking about you know the last 20 seconds of the game. I'm supposed to be thinking about the game and finishing mm-hmm. the game, but I'm thinking about all those years of losing early in the playoffs, yeah. guys getting hurt. So you had that flashback. Oh your man, whole career that, man, just came in front And of then you know my my brothers like man, you gonna cry if y'all win that shit? I'm like hell no. Nah. Like I'm you know I'm, I'm gonna be happy. You know what I'm yeah. saying? But like whatever you say is gonna happen, that's not gonna happen. You right. know what I'm saying? Like it's just every ounce of emotion Most come out came at that time. Out, yeah. and it was, I, I'm, I'm glad it did because I needed to feel that. I wanted yeah. to appreciate that, and it helped me uh, appreciate that moment even more, though. You know, we all watch it year after year after year after year, like champions, da, da, da. then they go in the locker room, and then they put the goggles, and oh, they done, man. like, how was that to get that champagne shower? Man. My hair smelled like champagne and cigar smoke for, like, two weeks, <laughs> and I really didn't care. I love exactly. that shit. I wake up in the morning like, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, that's that's like, yeah, like that because it, it was like a nostalgic feeling. Like, I I know we and we tore that fucking locker room up. You know what and I'm how saying? And how was how was the city like? Right, I'm talking about like not the parade, even that because I remember seeing AG, yeah, AG saying that he got out because he couldn't even drive home. Yeah. He got out with the clothes, with the Man, jersey, jersey shirts on. So, like, how was it for you? Like leaving the arena that night and going like like how was it? I ain't leave the arena till like 1 2, 2 in the morning. So, just partying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was, uh, <laughs> like, yeah, like I wasn't, well, I'm yeah, like, I'm, I'm soaking all of this. I'm not going Fair nowhere. Enough. Like, they gonna have to kick me out of here, you know? Yeah. Right. Cause it was, I'm like, I need to experience this to the fullest. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? How was like, that for your family, bro? Amazing. Just had your family there amazing. just to experience that. I told wifey, I'm like, hey, bedtime may not be a thing tonight. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm like, they gotta come to the game. Like, and we had, uh, you know, my, my youngest was maybe like, Shit, 13 months at the time. Yeah. So, you know, we had strict bedtime with him, you know, yeah. but I'm like, but my oldest was seven and I'm like, nah, they, they, they yeah, come to the come game. Out, yeah, you know what I mean? All of this. It's family So event. I'm like, I, you know, I'll never know if, you know, it took 15 years to get there. You never know if you go get there again, you know? So I'm mm-hmm. like, I gotta, I need everybody here. My whole family was there. My wife's family was there. So that shit was just, I needed every experience possible that night. What was it like for you to sit out there and the, you know first to do the whole the the parade and then when you get there and you see you didn't roll through and saw the thousands and thousands yeah. of them and then you get to that one point where y'all on that stage and it's just a sea Flooded. of endless people it was like of thousands what is that to feel man. like to see that and they all there to celebrate y'all bringing something to the city that ain't been done ever like that shit was crazy like I've always like looked at pictures and from mm-hmm. parades and stuff, watch parades as, mm-hmm. a, as a, you know, watch some of the parades that you know. Yeah, I was involved yeah. in the playoffs and I'm kind of like sad day. <laughs> damn, like look at that, you know, watching the ring ceremony, mm-hmm. shit like that. So 
the parade was was everything you could imagine, bro, but more. Like going out there, seeing them people like peeking behind the curtain, like, don't go out. We like, man, I gotta see this shit. Right. Like, <laughs> you know, just seeing the floods of people like waiting on us to come out. Like Denver, like the fans out there, crazy, man. Yeah. Like they really, really care about the team and like they, you know, snow, so it yeah. don't matter. They was at all the games, you know what I'm saying? And like that's the that mile high, you know, advantage, that shit is real. You know what I mean? And I, I appreciate those fans. What, they, they was, it was there for us this year. What shit. finger you chose? You chose the middle oh, finger? middle finger. You know it. He's a basketball player. He know what finger you going with. Your middle middle finger. finger. I'm my first, you know where I'm going with. Right. Uh, so, yeah. You guys will see it in October 24th. So, hey. Joe, you, you got an opportunity to see Joker all year. Yeah. Front row seat of Joker. That step back off the wrong leg, that's naturally. Yeah. He shoot that like it's, it looked unorthodox, but it's like, it's almost like him shooting a layup. It's What you see in him when you like, because you a center, yeah. you know, and you played that position so long. Mm. Like, what you see from this year that you was just like, damn, he, he fucking everybody up he running into. Man, his footwork is crazy. His touch is crazy. But what's even crazier is that, like, he don't. He not doing nothing emphatic out there. Like he not yeah. dunking crazy. He not blocking shit. But he like, you look up. You like, damn, y'all got forty and seventeen and twelve. Right. I ain't damn. Like I know he scored a couple times, but like, like he, everything he does is big, but it's also quiet. If that kind of makes sense. Like he not out there doing. Soft. Yeah, yeah. Like he like boom, boom, slow roll, boom. Oh, pump fake. You went boom layup. You know yeah. I'm gonna get a couple tip like, tip in rebounds and. I'm a, like, he gonna make the right basketball play every time. Regard, you know, in, in the finals, we like, yo, go score. You gotta go get a bucket. He's right. like, oh, fuck that. You know, I gotta make this, this is the right play. Just let's just play basketball the right way. Right. And like to see your best player be like, okay, cool. Like, I'm not gonna force the shot. If they double me, cool. One of y'all cut. Yeah. Mike be I'm ready to shoot. Yeah. Like, I'm a dime. Like, he make the right basketball play, play every, every time. time. And you wanna play with a person like that. You a rarity in the fact that you didn't play with some of the, you know, the all time yeah. greats. Hell like yeah. you didn't have Luca, you didn't have CP, Blake, you didn't have KD, Kyrie. Now you got Jokic. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And Murray. You know, like talk about what you've seen in them dudes from them practices that separate them and make them mm -hmm. as great as they are. I think all of those guys are great players in their own way, but they're very different. I think um, what. Uh, is unique and the same about all of those guys is they're masters at their craft. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like the crazy layups you see Kai make, the one leg fadeaways you see KD make, the crazy step backs you see Jamal make, the the crazy floaters and shit that Nicola makes. Like they they work on that shit in practice. Yeah. Before practice, after practice, like they working on them crazy shots. Like I seen Jamal work on a one leg, falling out of bounds three pointer. Like. I'm like, why are you working on that shot? He goes, I'm, you know, you never know. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but I've seen him I take some, <laughs> crazy, uh, some crazy, you know, time winding out. Yeah. You know, and he didn't switch the bitches. And I'm like, damn, like, you may he may take 400 of them shots to work on during the season. And then one could help us win a game or win a playoff series. So those guys really work on their craft. Do you know you the NBA's all-time leader in field goals? Yeah. So you know every time you shoot that, we, we got to get for it, sure. It's cat. Yeah, it's cat. And no, I'm, <laughs> we, no, I'm taking opposite show. of shots. So when they put you in the game, don't even play with nah, it. Just nah, we, nah, we nah, get nah. for sure. Yeah, but Dunks you got to hold yeah. that down because that's going to try to keep that yeah, forever, man. Keep that forever. Start, bench, trade. You got to oh, start one. You got to bench one. You got to trade one. Dwight Howard, mm. Anthony Davis, DeMarcus Cousins. Start, bench, trade. That's not that hard for me. It's not? No. It's not? All in their prime? Yep. All in their prime? Yes. Okay. Start, bench, trade. Damn. I mean, I know one of them going to text me and, and, and cuss me out. <laughs> they are his homies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Start, bench, trade. All in their prime. All in their prime. Fuck. This is tough. All right. Are we, are we taking into account just play? Like, no... Yeah, just play. That's them. Just that's them. No, no injury, nothing. Just play. Nah, this nah, is just the best nah, of the this, best this, of them. They this is their best. Who would you choose? Start all healthy. Start. I'm gonna go with AD. Okay. Bench. I'm gonna go with Cuz. Mm. I am surprised. <laughs> Me too. I'm and starting the Dwight. D. I'm, I'm starting Dwight. <laughs> starting I'm Dwight? starting Dwight. 
Why? What you mean? I'm just why? asking because I, I, I the I reason why I started AD because I'm like, I know he gonna give me offense and defense. Qu- just Man, like the what? The white was getting 20 plus, but he but shut a whole shooting though too though. I don't care about shooting. He made it where it didn't matter if he shot or not. He shut the whole shit down. <laughs> Completely down. He, yes, I agree with you. Down. And everybody was scared. Everybody was altering and changing how they man. I respect your opinion. I'm just humbly <laughs> saying what I would have done. I like I'm just humbly okay, so saying who, who what I would have Who you mentioning that? Man, look, I'm starting, I'm starting Dwight. I'm benching, I'm benching AD, and then I'm I'm trading Boogie. That, that's that's a tough call anyway, bro. Like, it's they, a tough like, call, but I got. I'm thinking about the shit that say. Boogie was doing in sack. Like he was the like. I'm not never boy. disrespecting him. You talking about the total body of work? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not I'm disrespecting like, the other two dudes right. got championships right. though. So yeah. I'm not disrespecting Boogie. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not devil. I, I yeah. love his game and respect yeah. him to the fullest, and he was a monster. Dwight gets short cut because of whatever people yeah, want to do. Course. Bro, I was part of that time. No, I had the to go the way, so I'm The boy knowing. did yeah. what he did. He should have had four, and nobody ever had four. Everybody sure. had three, and yeah. he should have had four in a row. Yeah. They didn't give him the fourth one because of other stuff, not because of the court. Yeah. Man, please. I'm, I'm thinking, like, because I didn't have to guard these dudes, so I'm thinking, like, okay, cool, Dwight, like, I know I got to guard him in the post. But with them dudes, like, they get it off the rebound, pushing it. They do a lot you know of what I'm saying? Like, so I'm thinking about I'm not like, all over ain't the court. Ain't no wrong answer. But that's yeah. what, Q just, ain't no wrong answer, you know. <laughs> I say that to say that's how dominant he really was. The no, they was all dominant, dominant though. He still get put there with me. Yeah, no, I'm just saying. I feel it. you, I feel you. Proceed. <laughs> if you had to pick four other teammates out of all the teammates you'd have had in the NBA, mm-hmm. you'd have had a lot of them. Yeah. You had to pick four other teammates to run the four, to run the five with you, who would be the four other teammates? Ooh, damn. That's tough. He got some shit too. He gonna have yeah. one of them teams too. Yeah. Except that we got every ass is alive. We gonna put like a bracket together, see who had the code. D Wright, and I'm interested to hear what you had too, cause D Wright had some sleeper shit. Damn, yeah. that's crazy. Okay, I'm gonna go me at the five. Right. Damn. See, this is tough. I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm putting KD at the three, so that's. That's done. <laughs> uh, four, I'm trying to decide if I want to go. Dirk. Dirk, Blake, AD. Joker. Damn, Nicola. Like, that's AD. tough. Unless I just go full Monstars and just go four footers and, and, and CP, you know? However you want. All right. So, I'm going to go me at the five. It's crazy mm-hmm. right here. Me at the five. Nicola at the four. Mm-hmm. Mm. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> it's uh, crazy already. KD at the three. Mm. Kyrie at the two. And CP at the I point. I forgot about Ooh. Kyrie. He didn't put Luke in it. He ain't put Luke. Ooh. He that's had Luke in the six though. man or some shit. That, that was a five. Ooh. Okay, okay, okay. Tell me, when did you become vegan? I heard about you got a whole garden in your in your dig. You don't yeah. look vegan, by the way, because I be confused by people that say they vegan. I don't know what to think. Well, how you look if you vegan though? Because some people be real skinny. Some people be regular fat people. That's like whatever. Like I'm vegan. I'm, I thought if you was vegan, you was supposed to be slim thugging it. Like you know. What I'm, saying? Uh, I'm just saying. Bro. I don't know what, what to think. I'm not at? trying to. Bro, I'm not trying to be an expert. I'm just talking about how he got on his vegan journey and. Like so, how did you get into the vegan? Like I heard Man. you got a whole, you got a cooking show. Like what? What? Yeah. Is, is the, do you enjoy the food? Is I, it, you're I, from I, Houston. Yeah. You so from the south? When I, when like I how you? My mom, I was like, hey, I'm doing this vegan thing. She was like, what? You Your mom did? My mom, my, I called my grandma. And my mom I'm like, hey, I'm gonna do this little thing, this vegan thing. You know, I'm gonna just eat plants, and they was like, "You sick? What's going on?" <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, no, no, no. no. So you can't you know, eat mama cooking no more. I mean. Or do nah. she cook vegan Grandma, stuff? Mama, nah, mama she's not cooking, cooking no vegan nothing. You know I what know I'm she like, ain't. Well, this, nah. this, we sticking to it. I took to her to a couple know. vegan restaurants. She's like, oh, oh, now if I had this, I'd do it. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, but when you tell somebody you're vegan, they initially think all you eat is salad and shit. Yeah. Bro, that's you know what, what I'm saying. saying? I'm ignorant so, to the fact. I yeah. don't know. But it's like, I mean, it's other stuff out there, but like. What, I, cauliflower? Cauliflower wings, they go. I'm telling you. Cauliflower wings. 
That ain't, ain't, they ain't. Hey, look, don't did look, you just see what he said? No oh, such see, thing as cauliflower wings. Y'all ain't what I'm talking about. That man just said yeah, cauliflower yeah, wings. You can make cauliflower, you can, you can bake them, you can fry them, you buffalo, boom, you ready to go. It's and you not call a them wings. That's not a wing. But in my mind, I got to say it's a wing. No, you lying to yourself, my guy. Don't lie. Don't okay. do that. Okay, cauliflower. See, some, but you know what I, I ate? Some. I ate though. I ate the cauliflower pizza with the, with the with the whole cauliflower yeah. fonder. Yeah, and see, then he, he a fake vegan. He don't eat steaks wild, and stuff, bro. but he like eat. Uh, what is I don't it? eat Lamb, beef or pork. Oh, he, yeah, a little flexitarian. Ain't no wrong with a little flex. See, that means you flex. Weak. That means flex. You flex. <laughs> that means you weak. He flex makes on him. You no. know what I'm saying? Little flex. No. No. I'm a little flex. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah. But, but what is it like? Like I mean, like for me, like uh, I do like some of the Beyond Meat stuff, mm-hmm. like uh, pizzas, pastas. So, uh, so let me get yeah. this straight, right? So you want to like I barbecue? I get it. Yeah. In. You want them people? You gonna tell them you get one of them Beyond burgers, right? You not gonna even know. Al Hand, see, Al Handy tried me like this. Hey, bro, hey, bro, come try this, try this. Remember the little food truck with the Beyond? Bro, it ain't no Beyond burger on the planet that I'm gonna sit here and bite into. I don't care how you dress it up and dress it down. I know a real burger and a fake burger. But you're not, you're not eating a fake burger. You're not like, oh, this trash. You still eating the. the, the no, the, I'm not. Eat. I don't want it. You not, not, no, not telling the crazy difference. Like if they both grill the same, like I didn't ate some they didn't good they good. Solid, uh, yeah. Yeah, they solid. They ain't, they ain't I ain't disrespecting that and one of y'all taste palettes. I'm telling you what I know. I'm a real <laughs> one when it comes to this barbecue grilling and We ain't talking about barbecue, stuff. we talking about vegan. Barbecue. Barbecue. I'm, I'm talking not talking about, about barbecue. Like barbecue. Real Let stuff. me ask you this. This is a real question. So since you My vegan wasn't real? No, it wasn't. <laughs> since you vegan, David Ruffin. Like, how is it on the on the road? Like, 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 cause restaurants, a lot of restaurants, I mean, a lot of hotels don't mm. serve that. Sometimes you get in kind of late, late or, or late night and you be? don't have too many <laughs> spots. How is it on the road for you to be? Uh, the road, the road sometimes, that that's, that, it's tough. Especially, you know, how, you know how we get in late sometimes. Yeah. Like, sometimes I bring some snacks on me. <laughs> <laughs> You gotta bring. <laughs> Sometimes I bring, you know, my little, lunch, my little lunch, my little lunch bag and stuff on okay, me, you know, okay. to get me through. Oh, but uh, the team, they do a good job at like making sure the hotel will have some certain stuff for me. Get you some alternate. Yeah, yeah they have me in my little alternate stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's yeah. love. What yeah. you th- tell me? What you think? Have you seen uh, today the first time we seen Kevin Hart love vegan fast foods? Oh, like, like heart, so, heartbeat, heart or something? house, or heart, heart house. house. You seen? Hey, you have. I ain't never been there, but. You going today? No, no, hell no. That wasn't that. that wasn't the point. I was. Trying I thought you to were saying. Like, you heard, I was, was trying, trying to go. See have you heard good things about? Yeah, not I, I, me. I, I haven't been yet. I heard good stuff. Yeah, yeah. 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 Go yeah, I heard he. Like, I heard he did a good like job. A, with you him. should go and just see what they got up in there, though. Yeah, I heard he did a good job. I ain't saying go cauliflower Listen. wings, but maybe burger. Cauliflower wings, though. Do the damn thing. Nachos. All that. Whoever doing that, do that. I'm just trying to let you know that's not. I'm not. You can go like one day a week, like boom. I'm not gonna perpetrate that. That's not what I'm Can about. Go one day Let me ask you this: We all want to play for Team USA mm-hmm. to get an opportunity to play for Team USA. Go to Brazil and and win that thing. <laughs> Where you go, Brazil? <laughs> and win that thing. Yeah. That was it, though, because that's that Rio man. de Janeiro. I know that was like was live. Man, man. We had a good time out there. We had a real good hey. time, man. And I played with some, you know. You got great. a gold medal and a chip, yeah, bro. Yeah, guys, you didn't, you didn't got down deep. Yeah, Your yeah. trophy case looking mighty nice over it's, there, boy. It's solid. It's solid. It's solid. It's solid. It's solid. It's solid. After this season ended, it's, it's, it's solid. Hey, time uh, out. I heard, was good. I heard that your style role model was Walt Clyde Frazier. He's one of them. Yeah. That's my man's. Yeah, man. he's I, one of them. I, for I'm sure. just wondering, how did he become your fashion? Did you start? When did he become? Did you see him like when you started playing and going to the games? Yeah, first? That when you, yeah. I'm yeah. like, like how you, how somebody get away with some cow print pants and like a jacket? Have you like, ever it, spoken to him about his swag? A couple times, like he was like, man, you know, I just. I just, like, what would I feel? You know yeah, what I'm saying? I'm I like, do what I do, like, baby. That way he go get all yeah, that. I say, hey, hold on, hold okay, on. cool. Tell Q about the hat game, man, because he be on my ass about first my hat all, game, and I'll be like, man, get you a bread, all, get you a nice little, you know what I'm saying? First of all, tell we him about not, the hat that, game because I be seeing you rocking some nice need, hats, man. Listen, come on over to the good side, man. The, the hat game, that's 
I take pride in my hat. Thank you. I take pride in my hat, game. Yeah, I take pride in my hat. I'm not about to sit here and listen to this man like he got 50 million hats in here. Like he got a couple of DJ D nice little flying hats. I got hats on at the Hall of Fame. Yeah. Yeah. I got 15 of them. You got to look like Bumpy Johnson. You got to, you know. My collection is getting deep. You want me to see you, boy? Yeah, you know, the hats, the hats is where it's at, man. Because you can dress them up, dress them down, yeah. any kind of weather you want to do. Tell you, you need to get on board. You man. halfway there right now with the bucket, though. Yeah, he ball head anyway. You, you know, he might well come. I'd be that damned shot if I'm about to listen to D Miles about some damn <laughs> fashion <laughs> shit. He right here wrong. got you gassing about some hat. Go on, man. Hey, got got hair. Hair. We be going to. You got a hat case? He got a little hat case coming. Yeah, yeah, you, you can fit a couple, you can fit two or three in there. Yeah, We're you know one, ready to go. Yeah, he be like, man, you looking like Bumpy Johnson. <laughs> I'm like, bro, what you talking about? Every time you come out, I think about either D Nice, D I call him DJ D Nice, or either B Bumpy or Spanky Johnson. Hey, no, I man, life like very well connected. Woo, My hat game, buddy, man. Say, hey, that man be looking good in this hat, man. Nice you know. brim, man. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Between the vegan stuff and the hat, I can't deal with this. Let me get back to my H-Town Navy, man. Listen, one of the questions I love to ask is when, you know, we all come from humble beginnings. We know you took care of mom and the fam. You know, you when got you contract. got that baggage claim, what did you do for Dre? Did you say, I'm about to goddamn go, I'm about to do this. And you, probably yeah. now, you know, we get older, we look back like it was dumb as hell. But like, but yeah. in that moment, it was everything. What did you, what did you splurge on yourself for? And what did you do? Oh, I went back home and went to the club. Oh, okay. You right won the, you the bar pop. Yeah, you bought the bar yeah. out? Because, you know, I was like, this is, you know, I see this, this this is what I want to yeah, do. You know what I'm saying? People, like, you know, yeah. I went back, you know. And at that point in time, bottles was very, very cheap. You yeah. Know what I'm like, saying? Yeah, so, now, it was, yeah, like now he was like, oh, you want tequila? 800,000, you know. <laughs> but back then it was, oh, you want the Patron? Oh, 150. 200, 300. 200. I'm like, oh, pff, let's go. You know, so I think it was, I mean, I got a car right away. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I got a car right away. Yeah. Uh, but then I went to the club one weekend back home in Houston, and I was like, "Everybody, come out! Like this, is what we doing?" And, uh, and I, Party not with smart, people. but it was fun in that moment, though. Yeah. <laughs> what made you make the decision to go back to school? I got real interested in meditation and Buddhism, um, and it wasn't nothing going on during COVID. Uh, I couldn't golf every day. That was not. I was, you know, I would have not liked it as much. So I was, yeah. like, you know, I started looking at schools to. Cause we didn't know how long we was gonna be mm -hmm. out, so I looked at schools that had the programs that I was interested in, and one had it that was a real prestigious school, and they had an online program. And I took a summer school class, and I, you know, did the interview process, got accepted, and I've been in school there for three years now. Tell us about, you know, the meditation and when you decided to go through that process. Yeah, of, uh, started meditating and yeah, honestly, I started meditating like in. Seriously, like, because uh, we, you know, we do those abroad trips before the season. Like, you go to China, yeah. so you mm -hmm. visit temples and, yeah. you know, meditate with the monks and stuff. So, like, yeah. I was like, damn, like, this is cool. And I learned about Buddhism. And it's, it wasn't like, hey, if you don't do this, you're going yeah. to hell. Like, it was <laughs> right. just kind of, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it was just kind of like, hey, just be the best D Miles, be the best Q Rich you could be. And that's it. Yeah. So, I was like, I, I rock with that, you know? Um, but I really started taking it seriously when I, <laughs> Uh, decommitted from Dallas and I went back to the Clippers. Because, mm -hmm. you know, at that age, you, you reading stuff about yourself and it's just like, oh, this guy's an asshole. He's a piece of shit. Da, da, <laughs> yeah. da. So I'm like, damn, like, is that really who I am as a person? Like, yeah. damn, I ain't, you know, I, I, this is just basketball. I ain't know I'm, you yeah, wishing this, deep. you wishing this upon me? Like, that's kind of, you know. Um, so I really got into meditation then just to kind of like have a separation from basketball and, um, I got into it then, and it's just become a part of my everyday life, my practice, and uh, the school I'm in right now at Brown, they got a program that offers that, and uh, it's it's been a part of my journey, so it's, it's big. Yeah. Yeah. You've been in the league for a long time now. You didn't watch, basically, you know what I'm saying, the, the eras kind of change and evolve into something else. What do you, how do you feel about what you're looking at, you know, while you out there it, it still being a part of the game from where you came in to where it was? It's a lot more yeah. positionless, mm -hmm. you know, free form shooting yeah. and guys getting up and down. Like, how do you feel about being part of that league and, and how it was looking? Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, obviously when I first came in, it was a lot of cross five, turn five, post up. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, and at that point, and there's no disrespect to a lot of the guys out here now who are really playing some great basketball. It's like if you was a stretch five or a stretch four, at that point you was considered soft and you wasn't playing. Weak. You know what I'm saying? So right. Like, 
But now to see that kind of change and like, like you said, it's positionless and the game is more flow and it's artistic and guys are just yeah. doing all kinds. It's no positions. Guys are doing some crazy stuff with the basketball out there, which is cool to see, but it definitely has changed the uh, positions. But um, I'm sure at some point it'll change back. You know what I mean? But, but guess it's, what? It's cool. All that means is your field goal percentage will still high, stay baby. all time Keep shooting them jump shots. So, <laughs> like, hey, let cool, them keep man. on shooting yeah. all them threes and all this stuff being big men. Yeah, that's cool, man. Like I, I, I did, I enjoyed it, so it's fun. Well, that's a wrap, man. man we appreciate so much. you appreciate pulling up, bro. man. We My got dog. the NBA appreciate champ, man. world champ, yeah, yes, world champ, DeAndre Jordan, Jordan in the building, live on location with the guys. Man.